Thank you and good afternoon. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation and my other colleagues on the Executive, Federal Executive Council, Minister for Budget and uh, Economic Planning, Minister for Information, National Orientation, Minister for Solid Minerals and the Special Advisor to Mr. President on Media. Once again, good afternoon. The SGF had said, Mr. President, is not against protest. Mr. President, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the Democrat to the core, he believes in federalism. He believes in freedom of speech and human rights. His concern and that of many people in this country and even beyond is that the protest would remain peaceful and orderly such that the gains that have been made over the last 12 to 15 months should not be dissipated that the momentum that has been achieved in turning around the Nigerian economy should not be dislodged, disturbed, or dislocated. I think amongst many other well-meaning Nigerians, the president truly understands the concerns that are being expressed, particularly the high and elevated cost of living which is not peculiar to Nigeria at this stage, with wars in Ukraine, Gaza, and even Sudan. There's disruption around the world, and there has not even been a full recovery from COVID. So inflation is high around the world. Costs are high around the world. And with our import dependency for raw materials and so forth, we too are feeling the effects. However, inflation is falling around the world and in Nigeria. Over the last 15 months or so, the economy has been turned around and I would even say saved from the precipice. I will not repeat all the specifics of the initiatives that were reeled out by the Minister for Information. But I will envelope them by saying that, on the one hand, we have come from a situation where the nation was living on debt. Every time there was a bill to be paid, it was not paid from revenue, it was not paid from investment funding but it had to be paid from debt, particularly from the central bank. And of course, that was not sustainable. That is no longer the case. The revenue of Nigeria, as a result of diligent application of technology and new processes to federal government expenditure in, uh, um, revenue, including that of the revenue earning ministries, departments and agencies, as well as federal government owned enterprises has doubled. Compared to the first half of 2023, the 2024 revenue of the federal government has doubled and is expected to maintain that trajectory. And on the cost side, there has been rejigging, there has been reconfiguration of the procedures and the processes such that costs are now under control, spending more visible and accountable, and the money of Nigerians is being well spent. So that was the basis on which, as a result of implementing measures that were necessary, reform measures that were needed to save the economy. Yes, 
they had led initially to a spike in cost because it's like medicine. You take the medicine and then the effect comes. So the cost is the medicine and it comes first. However, already we are seeing that the benefits are coming. The economy in the first half of this year has grown. Agriculture, which was negative. So when you say, why are food prices high? Why is there a lack of food? Because agriculture was contracting. In the first half of this year, in the first quarter of this year, it has started growing back again. And we expect that, and we're doing everything to maintain that. Industry is growing, led by ICT technology, led by solid minerals. It is growing and creating employment. And likewise, of course, services, given our relatively high skill level. Services are also growing. So that is the turnaround that we, and the momentum that we do not want to see um, slow down in any way. But on the other hand, Mr. President, even while campaigning, had committed to ensuring that the costs of reform were not to be borne by the poorest and the most vulnerable in the society. It had to be those who are more wealthy, who had more reserves, that would have to share the biggest part of that burden. And so, as was said, earlier by the Minister for Information and National Orientation, a series of measures in agriculture for small-scale industry, even for larger industries, there's financing at 9% is being made available. For transportation costs, CNG, which is 30% of the cost of PMS for fueling vehicles, is being made available. And it's important to point out that in implementing reforms, there are times when the what is planned and the timetable that is planned sometimes slips. But the answer is not to now throw out the effort. The, the answer is not to stop. The answer is to keep going and keep trying. That was the case with the direct benefits, the direct payments for 15 million households covering 75 million people. At first, it didn't quite go according to plan. So there was a pause. And now, under a much better and technologically strong configuration, payments to individuals have started going out again in the last, and since it, it was restarted, one million households covering five million people have received their benefits. And in the last week alone, 300,000 payments went out. So under the new system, we can expect a scaling up, a speeding up of the pay payments that Mr. President committed to giving to the poorest and the most vulnerable to helping them. Likewise, the CNG effort is, is going to gain momentum. Buses and kits are expected to arrive this coming month and to, for the rollout to be speeded up. So we have stayed the course in terms of the effort to make sure that what is promised is delivered and the benefits are now going to continue um, to be rolled and are implementing a comprehensive plan that covers agriculture, covers young people. It covers transportation costs in the urban sector. It covers grants to smaller enterprises, 50,000 Naira for micro enterprises. And it covers, as I said earlier, funding at an affordable interest rate. Inflation is slowing. But interest rates are still high um, as central bank 
battles inflation and carries out his monetary policy in line with his mandate. So against that backdrop, it's important to find cheaper funding so manufacturing can go on, so people can borrow to do their businesses. And in addition, there is approved and coming in the housing sector, financing for people to afford mortgages so that they can pay for their property over a long period, over decades, as opposed to being asked to pay in a matter of months. We have heard about the other key elements of what is being done to get the economy growing and to get jobs going again. Because it's when you make investments that you increase productivity, that you grow the economy, you create jobs and there reduce poverty. And the key element there also is that our major resource, what we have to rely on most is the God-given resource of oil at a time when crude oil prices are high. And we have the commitment of those in charge of the oil industry that there will be a substantial, a 25% increase in oil production to 2 million barrels a day. And the benefit of that is immediate. It allows funding across the board, social services, infrastructure, business support, agriculture. And the commitment of Mr. President is in the immediate term to bring down food prices. And that's why there are initiatives in addition to supporting farmers to produce. And um, just three days ago, in, a, in conjunction with the Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, I led an initiative to reorder some funding that was available to Nigeria from one of the multilateral development banks. We quickly rejigged it, reoriented it, and directed it at fertilizer that was available to purchase that fertilizer and have it distributed particularly to small farmers to catch the last elements of this growing season, this planting season, as well as to prepare very, very well for the dry season farming uh, in the nearest future. So these are elements of a concerted plan by Mr. President to build a better, stronger, more prosperous Nigeria and what he's saying in the meantime is that we need to give ourselves this golden opportunity to take Nigeria forward. We need to be patient with each other. We need to listen to each other as he is listening to Nigerians in his effort to lead us into a better future. Thank you.